Hi everybody, welcome to Company TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobbling Japan. And Ryan and I, just one minute ago, have decided that we're gonna do a giveaway. A well, lunchtime. A, a, a mini giveaway. <laughs> Ryan's feeling good. Yeah, I'm so, feeling kind. I had an idea and Ryan ran with it. I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna guess <laughs> you some, had an idea. We're gonna, we're gonna give some stuff away, so stay tuned. Uh, later in this episode, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, that. watch the whole episode, because we'll be dropping hints throughout. throughout. Okay, so Ryan's got a tank. Bang, and, bang. And it looks like I'm gonna be building an Aventador. Yeah, you got a lot of love. People are telling me to build the car, so it's gonna damn cool. It's gotta happen. I'm gonna make a Gundam car. Or as some people say it in all caps, Aventador. Oh, yes, everybody loves this car. Yeah, which is understandable. So it's a beautiful uh, car. Before we talk about this or your tank or whatever else I've oh, got, yes. let's uh, look at what's coming. And I'm gonna actually start with something a little different today. It's a book. Ah, reading. So this is the uh, the. It's called the Ism of. Master grade, and that's how they translate the title. What we got here, master grade. Gunpla no ism, so it's Japanese. It's like a well. schism. The, the ism. ism. The I don't know how they, this is Japanese, right? So <laughs> they they find this word that they think is interesting, and they throw it into conversation half the time. Narcissistal. So <laughs> so basically, people. Uh, I wanted to show this because people had written into us and said, "Is there any kind of catalog for like Gundam models and master grade line?" And I said, "Well, you know, they haven't really put out anything official." And uh, while this has got Bandai support, you can see that it's actually got... So it's an official um, yeah. guide, an official biography? <laughs> biography. <laughs> Basically, it talks about the Master Grade line. So it, it starts with, uh, you know, talking about the, the ARC-782. Everybody knows this one. Different like, generations of it. And uh, now, then you go through this, uh, a lot of text. There is a lot of text in this book. And it's not in English. And it's talking about the evolution of the master grade line through the, its history yes. and advances in the design and engineering so it's a lot of text black and white oh, i don't know about that not in english people well so. you know don't let that worry you ryan because when you get up to present time they actually go right up to the marisai which was up the, to page 200 and yeah the marisai is one of the last ones they mention after that you get a full yeah. color catalog so this is all the master grade models with all of their box art and information. So Which is can, very cool, actually. It's actually a great reference yeah. uh, because, um, you know, although I know quite a bit about the Master Raid line, I don't know what uh, the exact order they were released yeah. in. And this one actually gives you Whoa, the that numbers. One is yeah, that's crazy. the Quidley. I built this one. And uh, yeah, all the box art, all the different generations of these kits. It's actually really, really cool. So for you Master Raid fans out there and people who had asked for catalogs of it, this kind of thing. Well, here is the the ism of master grade. It's called. You can uh, learn all about the hobby. Yeah, and actually, I mean, oh, even though God. a lot of it you won't be able to read, I think just the images is enough. Yeah, for yeah. This they're book. they're giving yeah. you all the, the images that they've used for uh, press and stuff like that. It's all in there, and the box art. So the ism ism so of for the master grade for you fans out there. For the love of Gundam. And now we gotta now we gotta talk about Plamo. Now we got the new stuff that came in today. This is the uh, the GM Sniper Two. A mass-produced GM Sniper 2 from Gundam 0080. And uh, what's cool about this kit yes. is that it comes with this thing. The Draken. Oh, yeah, this thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. it is the Draken. And, of course, it's just, just your basic kit. You get to make your standard gym, gym, gym sniper version with the addition of the little Draken. So that's kind of cool. It's like your pet, maybe? They're made, they actually, uh, Bandai's premium shop, yeah. had made a uh, white version of this yeah. for, the Aust for um, I guess, Australian, not, really? not for Australian customers, but uh, there's something called the white dingo version of this model, oh, and Australian cool. people know all about that one, so. Oh, okay, uh, that's cool. Yeah, you can't get them, unfortunately, outside of Bandai's hobby shop, but white dingo version is available too. Dingo Come. ate my baby. By a dollar every time I heard that. Okay, so this is Plano, but it's not Gundam. It is the Evangelion Mark VI. Yes. And like uh, other Bandai Plano models, you can see that it's uh, basically all colored, snap fit. Comes with the effect parts here. And uh, there's actually quite a bit of runners in here. Yeah, this is... Because they're quite small. The amount of colors involved in the Mark VI is quite a bit more than in your standard Gundam. Yeah. Model, so. You have plenty of runners to, to go through. And uh, the cool thing, I, someone actually pointed out to me was the spear through the body. It's like yeah. the death scene, which is yeah. pretty cool. So if you're into the Evangelion, the, this uh, is for you. 
Yeah. 2.0. 2.0. I think 3.0 is coming. 3.0 is coming. Yeah. All right. So there you go. All right. So it appears that I am going to be building an Aventador. Aventador. Gundam themed car for the show. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about that because uh, it seems that the people have spoken and that's what they want. So we're going to talk about the Aventador. All right. So it looks like I'm building the Aventador in uh, a Gundam theme, a Gundam Aventador. And uh, I have some ideas for this. I haven't flushed them all out yet. Uh, but uh, the first thing I need to do when I'm going to build this is I need to uh, look over it because it's not like the snap fit kits we know from Bandai. So when I open this up here, the first thing I notice is that, sure, they're like colored. Like this is going to be the frame. This is going to be the engine block. And you have this white body. I've already cleaned it up. I've removed all the, uh, all the uh, gates and stuff from it, which might be a bad idea because it's a little bit flexy here so I have to be careful now mm. but I'm just doing this to get a idea of shape and color but uh, the, when you build a Gundam each runner is a different designation and then you go from that runner to the part you need but with this there's no designation of runners it just it's just part number so if they say like you need part 30 31 you got to find part 31 amongst all these really there's no like yeah runner? it took me by surprise at the beginning but oh. I'm used to it now so I'm not terribly worried about it it's not no big thing but uh, like I said before, I'm going to be building this as a Gundam and Gundam colors. So what I did first was I had to look at a, uh, a picture of the uh, RX-782 because that's what I'm going to be using as my base. And I have to, when you build something that's themed, you have to figure out how it's going to cross over. So looking at this picture, I have to find out what can uh, represent something that you know from a Gundam, from the RX-782. And so what I've decided is that uh, these little vents here, they're on the front of it, these will be like the yellow parts that you will find on the uh, skirt of the RX-782. And there's actually these matching on the back. So I can have the, the back of the skirt as well. Which means that I have this vent here. What's that going to be? Well, that's going to be the, uh, the chest vents, the yellow chest vents on the, uh, the RX-782. And here, well, what, this, what could this represent here? This could represent the, uh, the Vulcan cannon, which appears on the side of this Gundam's head. So once I have an idea of what is going to be what, it's a matter of actually getting down and do, figuring out how to color it. And for that, I need line art. And uh, we've got some in the manual, fortunately. Their deco guide is actually pretty useful for line art. So what it is, I did is I actually uh, copied this. And using the photocopies I got here, I actually started just goofing around with pencil trying to figure out what's going to be what. And I've uh, got a few design elements here, and of course I'm not finished. But once you get a rough idea of what you might want it to look like, well then you actually uh, need to start assembly. Because you need to have the body assembled before you can start painting the, or you need to have the chassis assembled, otherwise the painted body is useless to you. So what I did, first of all, was cut out this big piece for the chassis, and I painted it using the uh, Tamiya spray. It's now semi-gloss black, like it indicates in the manual. And there's actually some pieces that will lay on here, but they don't go in yet, because what I had to do was actually make the uh, disc bricks. Now, for those who don't know, I've got, uh, I'll show you the runner that they come on. This is the runner, and you can see that here, these are the rear brakes. I purposely haven't done anything with them yet, because I wanted to, to show all you viewers here. And one thing to note, if you look at the back here, is these are undergated. So when I remove them from the runner, I'm going to actually, I'm also going to have to remove this under gate. And then these things here, these little pegs, are going to be what hold these disc brakes onto the, uh, the chassis here. So I'm not going to take these off yet because I haven't put the tires on. I'm not at that stage. But what I wanted to show is, you see how each piece is the same and these disc brakes, they all look the same, but there's a front and a back and a left and a right. And you need to know which piece is going to go on which, which part Otherwise, your assembly is going to be all wrong. So what I did here when I was painting is I actually took a little bit of masking tape and I made sure that I knew which part is which. So this is part five, this front disc brake. This is part six. And I can refer back to the manual because what's going to happen is when I take these, they're actually going to attach to... Attach... Hold on, let me get this right here. Attach in, in this way and then you drop them on here. They're actually... You see this peg here? You, you'll drop them on, and then the pieces that fit in this groove will actually go on the top. And once you get the steering mechanism in place, well, these wheels will turn for you. But uh, if I had not 
re uh, tried to remember which piece is which, I would be putting things in the wrong spot. I'd be making a big mess of it. So uh, with that said, I'm just going to make sure that I put these back so they're safe. But uh, one thing to note is that they, they, uh, we're going to start painting these. Well, I have to start painting these. I don't think I need to show too much of the painting because Scott did a really good job in his uh, part two of uh, boss builds, two or three where he showed painting. But what I've done is I actually just sprayed it all silver because uh, I couldn't find a, a silver in stock here that I wanted to use. And then the next step will be actually having to paint the cal brake calipers on the inside here. And once that's done, well, then I'm pretty much finished with the wheels. I can put the tire on. But if you notice that the, uh, where are my wheels here? These are, all, these are all chrome right here. Now the manual says you can use chrome or you can use metallic black. But I wasn't sure how metallic black would, would look, so I actually cut a piece off and I sprayed it with my metallic black spray that I have at home and it's drying right now. And I'll check it out after and I will determine which I like better. I'm kind of leaning towards metallic black because I think uh, there's not too much silver or chrome on an RX-72 Gundam. <laughs> but let me know what you think. Which would, which would we prefer? Silver or chrome or, uh, or metallic black? And uh, I will probably ignore you and go with metallic black. <laughs> And so basically the first stage of doing something like this is just uh, evaluation. What will I need to do? Uh, how do I approach it? You have to get everything in proper order because you're not allowed to make mistakes because you're working with the glue. So I'm going to just uh, leave this as it is. I'll, put, I'll uh, do some more work and we'll talk more about it next week. And by next week, I'll have fleshed out more of how it's going to be painted. So next week we'll show putting the assembly of the chassis together and of course some of the engine and then we'll talk about the body. So when I was actually uh, doing this and I was at home coloring these I thought you know what it would be a good idea is if we asked our uh, viewers what they would want to do. How would they make a Gundam themed Aventador car? What colors would they do? And when I mentioned this to Ryan he said we have to give stuff away. <laughs> so we decided we're going to do a giveaway based on your, your coloring of the yeah, we need a So Ryan, why don't you tell them the details? Okay, so to submit it, yeah. well, we'll leave a copy of this on the Hobbylink TV website, on the blog where post. you can grab it and print it out. It will be at print resolution. Yeah, you can then color it in. Yeah, preferably well, <laughs> and <laughs> scan it at a good enough resolution, please. Yeah. Well, this will I'll put that in the details. Yeah, if you then can please submitted through the user content submitted mission page on yeah. Hobbylink TV. Yeah. We will then put all your stuff together. Um, we're going to give you about a month, but we'll yeah. put exact dates there. Yeah. Uh, then we will make a Facebook photo album and we will allow people to vote on the like, top like. Yeah. five. And out of the top five, we will choose the number one guy. Yeah. The number one guy gets the Aventadore kit. The Aventador kit. Yes. And the yeah, other four the will get these posters. Yeah. So all of yeah. you who have been saying, Where's the camera? now's the time. <laughs> We've been saving them because we want. We just we don't want to keep giving them off no, no. for no reason. We don't have unlimited amounts. So. No, you know you gotta earn it. No. They're cool. You gotta earn it. So, yeah, so put your yeah. money where your mouth is, or your <laughs> pen where your mouth is. Put your pen where my paper is. <laughs> yeah. Color in this, and, and uh, they don't all have to be like the RX-72. Like, no, no, no. How many Gundam suits are there? There's plenty. So yeah, there's choose a Gundam suit you want it. Re have represented in your event door form, mm -hmm. and uh, submit that to us. Maze us. Maybe you can win your own event door. It's a sweet kit. Yeah, it is. Okay, so, so with that out of the way, giveaways are fun. All the details though, if you're yeah. watching this only on YouTube, please make sure you go to the Hobbylink TV yeah. blog and read up more there. All the details will be there. Yes. So with that said, I'll put this to the side. Ryan, it's your turn. You're going to show us what to, to do shine. with your tank. Yes, we will. I will. <laughs> Today I'm going to do something I've never done before on camera. Ah. Uh, photo parts. parts. <coughs> Not what you were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of photo parts. <laughs> um, so, this is my first time ever to do photo edge parts. So, mm -hmm. this could be a disaster. Or it could be a triumph, Ryan. Yeah, so I could show you just what I am made of. Okay. So, I will just quickly show you where I will be placing the photo edge parts. Okay. Which will be along here. I gotta say that uh, tank looks really cool with those yeah, guns on I there. Yeah, I put the guns on and it's sweet. Yeah. So the piece I'm gonna be placing is this one over here. So 
and this part here needs to be at a 90 degree angle so I even need to f fold this piece and hopefully oh. hopefully it doesn't break so uh, not pulling any punches here in your start let's, let's get started so Sid to the yeah. audience uh, these pieces should be glued down mm -hmm. okay was actually come off now I'll leave this guy off. The reason I'm not gluing this guy down is because I'm meant to fit the photo etched part in here and it's meant to come up here, so the 90 degree angle. Uh, the reason, and then I'll glue it down so mm -hmm. it all fits very nicely. Uh, so so I need, need a bit of access Just there. a bit of wiggle, wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you first do? Yeah, what's well, the first step for photo etch? You take your uh, Mr. Metal Primer, mm -hmm. you open him up. You then take a brush, yep. make sure you're working on the right piece, and you apply this to here. Actually, let me grab this piece of cardboard, so I don't want to damage the map. The mat is okay. Okay, so then you just apply it uh, quite liberally, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just apply it. Actually, uh, if you watch Scott's video on boss builds, he yeah, does. Yeah, he does a great job explaining. He does a bang up job, so yeah. I don't have his uh, experience. Are you, are you doing both sides? <laughs> yeah, you do both sides just to cover all bases. <laughs> this is going to be exciting. So it's uh, reasonably dry. I'm now going to cut it off. You would normally use uh, nippers, but you just can't get in there. So I'm actually going to use a knife. And Sid said, just apply a bit of pressure. There we go. Well, this is quite <laughs> small. And welcome to the world of photo etch. There's a reason Jesus. that they're small. <laughs> okay. I got everything there. Let's uh, have a look. Oh, there's a guy sitting over here. I'm quite amazed with this tang, like getting photo etched parts and everything. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see that coming, that's for sure. Okay, and this last little guy over here. Okay, so. Oh, one more? One little guy here. Now I just want to check that there's no little nubs, and if there is, I'll try get into them with my... Ooh, oh, nippers. So I'll try get off as much as I can, and if I can't get it off, I will then... You'll need to use a knife. Use Think with the I can use the, the sandpaper, we have some sandpaper. Yeah, we're going to use sandpaper. Some nippers are better for this because they have straight edge, whereas most of the modeling nippers that uh, we use on the show here have a rounded edge oh, okay. so it's difficult to get flush yeah yeah sandpaper is always good to take away that extra yeah you have to be gentle with these parts though because they, I think they can break quite easily if you're not careful okay well let's uh, just so that's okay for now. now. I just want to make sure this piece actually fits in before I glue it. Mm -hmm. Now the manual says you need to fold this piece 90 degrees. So is there an indication on the piece where the fold is supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, yeah, there is a, a, a mark here. I think I'll have to apply some pressure. Maybe something flatter would be better. There we go. Okay. Okay, so it folds reasonably easy. And that piece actually needs to fit in here. Okay, no that's that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, now now the fun begins. So I have a piece of uh, cardboard here. And uh, as Scott demonstrated, 
you have to use well we're using a special tamiya cement for photo etched parts yeah you take this guy off here you then squeeze a little bit onto some cardboard just won't stop coming out i know that's what somebody said <laughs> You then use a toothpick or something like that, grab a little bit and just start applying it to the plastic. I don't know if you guys can actually see. Oh yeah, we can see. You can see. I was, I've never been very good with this kind of glue, so it should be an entertaining experience. Fun, fun. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I probably would recommend using something to actually hold this so you don't get any glue on your fingers. Because you probably don't want this kind of cement yeah, gluing. <laughs> It'll take your skin off if you're not careful. Gluing your fingers together. Okay. Okay, so it's time for the question segment. Question show, time. Comments, and uh, I actually have a piece of paper here as well, so I'm going to be reading, because I want to read this one. It says, I'm still waiting for the Shenanju issue tutorial, which was supposed to be aired on episode 86. Now, I don't remember Shock. TV guide showing the schedule yeah, for our couple uh, TV. Uh, here's the issue with that. When it comes to uh, showing a tutorial based on pieces and broken pieces, I need to have those pieces in my possession. And uh, to get that, I either have to have take an entire kit which would mean mean I would go to the shelf, take a whole Shenanju kit just to use three pieces. And I wouldn't be happy because that's and my And I would probably get fired. So uh, <laughs> what I needed to do was contact Bandai to get these replacement parts. And I did. And they didn't have any in stock. So I had to wait. And I reordered again. And they came in today. So I'm actually going to show you right now, right Yong Han Lang, about the Shenanju issue that has been brought up a couple of times. So let's do that right now. Okay, so this is a skirt, and I only ordered the parts I need to show this, uh, this section here. I, I don't need to order the entirety of the skirt to make my point here. And uh, these parts here, well, this is actually uh, the torso. This is the part of the torso that's going to connect to the skirt. And I've just gone ahead and cut these out here. Now, here's the piece which probably causes everybody all these problems. Because when you look at it, well, that looks like a polycat, doesn't it? Well, it's not a polycap. A polycap would not support the weight of the upper half of the shenanjou. This is, this is plastic. It's very hard. There's not much give. And uh, when you actually assemble this thing here, I'll uh, try and get this guy together here. How does it go again? Didn't I just do this? Um, hmm. When you assemble this thing like this, this thing will go in the back here. Uh, the torso can move sideways thanks to this here and it, it can also pivot because of this piece here and uh, when you go to put it on I got the top half of my shenanjou and I got the bottom half of my shenanjou and what people do is they put it on like this and they try to push but if you're not pushing straight then uh, all the pressure goes at an angle into one edge of this little peg and it goes snap and that's and then you're doomed what do you do you have two halves of a shenanjou that will never be made whole unless you do some surgery so here's what I tend to do in this regard uh, I'll take this piece off for now, and I can even take this apart if I need to, if I want to get at this piece, but for now it's okay. And what I would advise you to do is to get some sandpaper here, and I've chosen just 600 grit because it was just what I had at hand here, and uh, get in there and just, just take a little bit of the plastic off. Don't go crazy so you get, it's flat, just take just a little bit of plastic off of this thing so you get a little bit more freedom when it comes to putting that on when you think you've got enough off make sure your motion is kind of like this so it's still round you don't want to have a, some square edge here if you can you want to round it off here I would have also advised you to, to go from the top at an angle and take off an edge because you want it to, to go on at the very beginning easily so if I take off and round down the edges here 
One of the reasons that this, uh, this piece is really weak, not only because it's very long and it has to support quite a heavy upper half of Shinanju, is that uh, they actually uh, have these gaps here in the molding process. And whether that's because it makes the plastic flow easier or because it will allow for less friction once the piece is on, you'd have to ask Banda. I think it's a little bit of both. But because of those little gaps, it's, it's structurally weaker. I think you can't deny that there's less plastic in there. So now let's say I'm satisfied with this. When it comes to actually putting this part on, don't put it on and just ah, push because that's where you run into sorts of problems. Once you get it on, start turning, 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 turning. And you can see actually, I'll pull it back out because I rounded off these edges. When I first tried to push it on, I first turned it, it actually dropped down quite a bit. So now I started and I'm going like this and I'm going like this and I'm going like this. Right, and I'll take this off. Do, 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 do. I'll put on the piece that's supposed to go on there first. And I'll put this, put this on all the way. Go, 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 go. You're done. That's how I would do it. Now, if, you, if this is too late for you because uh, you tried and you failed, uh, your options, actually, uh, you, you have a couple when it comes to fixing this. The simplest one is just to find somebody you can order this part from. If you only order this one part, you can fix your shinanju. You only need that one part because it contains the entirety of the peg. The peg isn't split in half. The next option available to you would be to try to fix it. And if I were to try and fix this, I didn't bring uh, supplies with me to do it on the show here, but what I would do, it tends to snap right near the base. What I would do is just glue it back into place first, just to hold it there. Once I would do that, I would drill a, a hole down the center of it and I would insert brass rod and I would put that in there so that it, it's it's up but you, you will still have to be careful because even if your your brass rod is going to be pretty thin and if you again try to rah, push it on the, the brass rod will just bend and then your glue will just be a waste but keep in mind though that uh, you can actually glue it this peg to this this piece here if you use a lot of glue and you actually glue this peg to this piece you'll have a little bit extra glue support in there but uh my b best best piece of advice when doing this is shave that piece down and then do like that all right so now the shinanju issue should be laid to rest i hope uh, everybody who's concerned about that that aspect of the kit can rest assured yes. that they'll be able to tackle it without difficulty can sleep at night can sleep at night without worrying about that yeah <laughs> okay Ryan, why don't you why don't you continue with the uh, the questions and comments okay well here's a question mm -hmm. uh from dreadnought 2044 i said in ryan i'm from joburg south africa johannesburg that's right for you Jones. who are not in the know and to be honest the gundam and figure scene sucks the only way to learn about gundam is through internet and tons of research there's only one anime store that we all really on that do stock Gundam kits and DVDs, but no decal paints, markers, etc. Oh, okay. But at least HLJ is around. Yay, HLJ. And it's actually <laughs> cheaper with some products. Anyway, thanks, guys, and love the show. And Sid, please build the Lambo with the RX78 paint. Your wish is my command, Dreadnought. Yeah, Joburg, eh? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't I... even know they had Gundam in Joburg. Didn't you check it out when you were there? I was in Cape Town. Okay, sorry. So, Africa. It's whatever. about a thousand Geography, kilometers. It's about a yeah. thousand kilometers. I don't know. Uh, actually, I have a question about my home country. This is from JTech23, and he says, uh, Sid, you said you're from Canada. What province are you from? Well, I'm from beautiful British Columbia, and that's actually what it's called in the license plates <laughs> in that province. <laughs> is that west beautiful or east British or Columbia? in the middle? W west side. West, west side. side. Okay. Total west coast. There's nothing further west in Canada than British Columbia, and it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Actually, South Africa is not terribly really cold, cold, cold in the summer. It's as not well. terribly hot in, or not terribly hot in the summer. Not terribly cold in the winter. Yeah. It rains occasionally, but I like rain. So yeah, I miss beautiful British Columbia. Actually, in South Africa, they call them provinces as well. Yeah. Okay, province. Mm -hmm. And like we here, have something else in common, right? Well, I think it was we were colonies, weren't we? Probably. French do, colonies. Do you have the Queen on your money? Uh, not anymore. See, Australia does still. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, God save the queen. Okay. All right. Hold on. I got one. You got a question? It says, I, I, uh, <laughs> this is Jiminbo. I yes. says, I love that silver color. Sid, what did you use? Now he's referring to the color that I showed on the masking tutorial that I painted the pipes oh, last yeah, yeah, yeah. Issue, which uh, is also what I use for the disc brakes on this Lambo here. Yeah. And uh, that is actually Tamiya's spray. It's called Silver Leaf. 
and it mm -hmm. comes out of the can that way and it is so, so nice. good so it's a it comes spray out, it's a spray it comes out so smooth wow. and shiny i cannot recommend it highly enough for people who are looking for good silver sadly yeah. we can't sell sprays yeah we can't sell sprays but you know and we know whose fault that is we like won't get into that governments or something yes yeah. okay all right now ryan uh, why don't you take it from okay here? well it's uh some, a lot of actually quite a few replies about the mullet now this one is from liam the great and actually you might know this guy everyone knows the best mullet ever belongs to kenshiro from hokuto no ken hokuto no ken the fist of the north star have you ever watched that anime that's what she yeah, said yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had so uh, he had a mullet he did yeah, yeah. okay it's uh but how long was it in the back with the hokuto no ken's there i don't think it is a colossal mullet but it, yeah it's, it's a good observation okay next is wing nut you know about that stuff yeah, to them, like a mullet is. It's just they have rat tails here. I know, Jeez. still. <laughs> this huge. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Build the car. Okay. This is from Wignan 323. Three. Oh, yeah. and the mullets are the best. Business in the front, party in the back. I vote MacGyver. <laughs> the best mullet. Yeah. MacGyver did have a good mullet. And this guy's right, <laughs> business in the front, party in the back. But the, the uh, how do you say, the, the greatness of your mullet is judged by how business it is in the front <laughs> contrasted with how much party there is in the back. It's like the army cut in the so front. So if there's not much different <laughs> lengths between the front and the back, then, you know, it's not, it's a mullet, but, you know, you're kind of just playing at it. But if you have, like, really, like, I got to put on a suit in the morning, my hair is, like, this this short at the front, and then in the back, it's you can tuck it into <laughs> your collar, like, you're the mullet king. Uh, I don't know, for some reason, I'm just thinking Karate Kid, I don't know why. Yeah, he was all right. Uh, well, Ashley MacGyver did get a few votes, yeah. so, yeah. Next, uh, Brian K913. I can attest to the. Ex Ooh, this isn't a mullet question. We'll get back to you. <laughs> Mullets. And I don't know how he knows this. Olivia Newton John mm -hmm. had the best mullet on her physical tour, and that's from Macca's Trice fan. You know, this actually, when I read that comment, I, I had to stop for a second and think can women oh, be she had qualified a mullet. to have mullets? Like, we know mullets. What, have you, when you think mullet, do you think women? Of course not. You think this men. person did. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, we she did look. have. If you, if you, if women are allowed to have mullets, so Olivia <laughs> Newton-John had a mullet, as well as the actor who played Joe Polnicek on The Facts of Life. If everybody remembers that, I believe she had a pretty good mullet too. Uh, next, any next? other nominees? Yes, we have a late great pro wrestler, La Eddie, Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero. He had a mullet. That guy. Snake. Yeah. From. Metal Gear? Metal Gear. Yeah, he had a mullet. Gee, this is quite a good one. Looking forward to he to hearing what hairstyles you insult next week. Ponytails on guys? Twin tails on grown women? Ponytails on guys? No problem. Twin tails on grown women. Oh, when you say grown, is that like over 18? Like 18 you can get away with it. 50 something. Depends what look you're going for. I think if your twin tails match your clothing. Maybe if your hair is graying and, you know. Mm -hmm. I have seen some twin tails on some ladies here in Japan who are like approaching midlife, 40, 50 ish. It's not a good scene. No. Not a good scene. Uh, Joe Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> he was. <laughs> That's mullet design for his character, though. I don't think he would wear that mullet naturally. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, Pat Sharp? Who is Pat Sharp? I don't recall Pat Sharp. I know the name, though, but I don't recall where I saw him. Okay. This one I kind of like. He says, uh, same business part. Best mullets ever. Mm, for all the Aussies out there, there would have to be Chris Farlin and Johnny Farnham in the 90s. We were famous uh, musicians. Well, they're still very famous. Yeah, in Oz. But it's yeah, the 80s. Know. I mean, uh, yeah, nice musicians in the 80s. And in the 80s. Okay, here we have, just have a list. Uh, yeah. Mel Gibson. Yeah. John Stamos. Uh, you know that show he's on? Full House? John yes. Stamos? Full House? He had a good mullet. It was like, oh, lo yeah, it was yeah, lo yeah. luminous. Yeah, yeah. It shone. Chuck Norris? Yeah, okay. Hulk Hogan? D he was balding really quickly yeah. though. Does it really count? Maybe. It was Christopher Walken, I do remember. On, in some movie he had it. Christopher Walken. Very short, like army cut on the front. Yeah. Wow. We're going and then he there. mentions the link, which we might show, but... Yeah, yeah, the link actually, he said the best one is this one. And he showed the link and I clicked on the link. It was Wayne Gretzky. And uh, Ryan didn't know who that guy is, but it's the uh, greatest hockey player in the history of the sport. And he had a good mullet. He was really Oh yeah, I saw the picture. Really short, and you could see it starting to curl. 
Because some people, they grow their hair long and it's just straight. But people who can't grow long straight hair, they still try to do the mullet. And it starts to curl out under here and kind of like hang in. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky had one of those mullets. Yeah. And uh, I have a, another final mullet yes. comment here. It says, uh, it's Richard170188. Yeah. He says, thanks for reading on my comment. He says, I used to have a mullet. It rocked. Richard, I salute you for admitting that you had a mullet. <laughs> and, Send us uh, a photo, yeah, I was Richard. Gonna say, if you really want to think it rocked, you, you got to put your money where you you're You can post on the Hobbyling TV and, uh, uh, Facebook page. You got to show us. You can show us. If you say, I used to have a mullet and it rocked, then we want evidence of that. I might have had a mullet when I was like eight and didn't know it. <laughs> your mum mollified you? Yeah, like you just, it just happened. Mollified? Yeah, you're like, huh? I had a mullet and it was by choice. <laughs> Everybody had mullets where I was from. Yeah, you can't, couldn't avoid it. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay. Uh, I can attest to the experience of arcades in Japan. This is from Brian K. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Have you guys played Gundam Extreme Versus? I have play, played Gundam Extreme Versus in I have arcades not. In, in Japan. And basically, it's... <laughs> That's how I played it. Ah, an mash, arcade mash, game. Mash. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question is from Mutant Cash. Mutant Cash. I think they made SD to get more girls into Gundam with the cute factor. I don't get why people are into them. I don't think they did it for girls because girls were never into Gundam. Maybe, but of course the young children definitely like them. Yeah, yeah, young kids love it. I and wouldn't say uh, girls. Because then you, you know, could say, well, they just start making pink they're, Gundam. They're and, so inexpensive and you can still yeah. paint them and mess around with them. People and you can do a great people job. People come up with some pretty yeah. crazy SD Gundam. I want to go to the shows, like they have a yeah. wall of SDs and yeah. it's just nuts. Yeah. Our next question is from. How do you pronounce this guy? Saturn? Suton. Suton 629. Did Ryan get a haircut? Yes, I did. Where's a good place in Japan to get a haircut? Um, anywhere. Actually, there is a lot of hairdressers in Japan. A lot. You have no laughing. idea. I think after dentists, the amount of the hairdressers is number two, like locations. Like, <laughs> I always have this funny anecdote when I lived in uh, Tokyo, this area called Katsushika. And uh, there was barber shops everywhere. And they actually had this one fairly fancy one. And uh, it, on, here's the entrance of the station. Here's this one fancy uh, hairdresser, barbershop. If you walked two, three minutes this way, they opened up another hairdresser, same brand. They're both there within two minutes of each other. Actually, I, I can say one thing when I do get a haircut is that I go to quite a nice hairdresser where they give you a back massage and a head massage. Yes. You know, they, it's a very good experience but the problem is because I'm a foreigner and they, they don't probably never cut foreign guy haircuts they take like a very mullet? long time and a mullet? like they take like it's amazing they like cut like it's perfect but it just takes so long like an hour and I oh. because they there's like a bit of sensitivity when cutting my hair and I can tell you an hour sitting in a chair makes me want to scream I uh, when I first came to this country I went to get my hair cut and I think the, the sign said it was like five six thousand yen and I'm like, I'm not paying $60 for a haircut. What is this? I don't pay that much. So I didn't cut my hair for a while. No, I found a place uh, near my house. It's a really old <laughs> grandpa and grandma family run business. Just the two of them. Their dying dog was in the shop, whatever. And uh, they were only charging like 2,500 yen for a haircut. And so I sat down and they cut my hair. And they, they, they do everything. Like Ryan mentioned the massages. They'll massage your shoulders and your head. And uh, they will also, uh, they'll shave not only your chin, yeah, like your neck, your they'll ears. shave your neck, they'll shave your ears, they uh, shave behind your ears. Yeah, that's insane. They, that was only 25 It's an experience. Yeah. Like I've never had as good haircuts put as this, I've had put in Put this warm cloth on your face and yeah. sit back in the chair and they hit the vibrate massage mode. And, wow. Yeah, no, it's an experience here. Yeah. It truly is. Yeah. Um, hello, Ryan and Sid. Awesome show. This is from Zion. Okay. Sid, I think you should build a car, but instead of the Lamborghini Aventador, you should do the Lamborghini Reventon. Yeah, the Reventon also, uh, the Fujimi kit released, I think, the same, same week that the uh, Aventador came in. But I'm partial to the Aventador. Yeah, yeah, no. I think the Reventon, for people who haven't seen it, it's basically uh, the Murcielago on steroids. They improved the performance of it, and it, it's actually like considerably more expensive than even the Aventador. But uh, it's all black. Like that's how they market this huge black mm. thing. And I think if you're going to do an event, uh, Reventon in that, you're better off doing it as like a Xeon suit. Yeah. Make it like this dark, all one color green, all one color red, like a Zaku or something. But uh, we're going with the Aventor. <laughs> Sorry, guys. 
Next question. Sid, about how long does it take you to build a, or, and paint an HG kit? Uh, an HG kit, you can use build in two, three hours maybe. Uh, painting it, depends how crazy you want to go with it. But if you're just doing one color, no masking, you know, one or two color combination, then you can paint it in a day. Just paint it, let it dry for a day, put it together the next day and you're good to go. Speed build. Next is from Dwayne. I am new to Gunpla and I was told that before I start building a master grade kit, I should wash the runners in lukewarm water. And so is this step necessary? Thank you. Uh, we mentioned this before, I think mm. way back when. And we even showed a video, I think, where I actually washed them. I think that Macross kit I built, I washed all the pieces. Uh, what happens when they actually run the plastic through the molds, when the molds release, you want to make sure that the plastic doesn't stick to the mold. So there's yeah. actually uh, a coating on the mold and that can leave residue on the plastic. And that can inhibit some of the paint from sticking mm -hmm. to plastic when you paint, which is why people advise using primer and stuff like that. But if you don't want to use primer, you can actually get in there and just use some soapy water and wash the runners and take any residue off. Uh, I used to do that, but I just, I just go with the spray. Yep. However, I've noticed, and people have come to me with this problem as well, is that if, if you take a spray can to just a normal piece without any washing, the paint might not st actually stick. It'll cover it, but it won't actually stick. And then if you start doing things like panel lining and using enamels and thinner, you'll actually take that paint back off because it hasn't properly adhered to the piece. So to be safe, yeah, wash your runners. But it's all personal preference. And so that is all for today. Thank all you right. very much for your questions no and problem. comments. So uh, remember, we're going to be putting up this picture of this Lamborghini Ventador lineup. Yes. And you have to color it in as a Gundam. And send it back to us and you could win some prizes. And uh, anything else we want to add? Uh, just uh, like us on Facebook, come yeah. to our blog. Yeah. Um, Be sure to come to our blog this time because you have to get that picture. And I made a playlist of every Gundam episode we've done. 27 yeah. hours. Not 27 hours of competition. Yeah, so if you want to die. Day. <laughs> well, it's not like you're a Korean gamer. It's going to not sleep for 27 hours. You can push pause, and sleep for a couple of hours, get up, watch some more episodes. But there is a playlist out there now, so you can... Uh, mm -hmm. Just subscribe to that, I think, and, sure. and uh, watch all the shows. Okay, well, with that, we're with that bomb we'll shout. see you guys in 27 hours. <laughs> see you later. See ya.